Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to yet another amazing session with us where Saurabh sir and I are going to be taking you to a unique journey, through a unique journey to another planet, right? Yes. Hey, welcome everyone to this another very interesting session I would say because uh, we don't travel often to other planets, no? That's why. So today it's a unique journey to another planet and meanwhile, during this whole session, no, we'll keep on answering a few questions to make sure is this planet good enough for us? Is this habitable, right? So with our knowledge, whatever you have, whatever we have, let's just combine together and let's have an exploration today, all right? Badia, badia ekdam. So people, we are clearly audible and visible. First of all, let's just that cleared out. Come on. Yes, very quickly, let us know in the chat. And also for all of you, because I did... I was the one who had replied on the text, right? So I was telling Saurabh sir as well. Some of you thought that because of the earlier session, there was some misunderstanding. It was me who texted in the live chat saying, we are excited to be here at 7.15. Yeah, so that was me. I would like to get that. <laughs> and yes, one reason we got this 15 minutes delayed is because you guys were also like very quickly back-to-back -back sessions were happening yeah. for you. So that's why. To give you some break, to give us some break, that's why we took... Because this needs energy. And this is a very interesting session, all right? Okay. Thank you, Bhavya. Audible and visible. Very good, very good. So, all right. All you space explorers, all you who think tomorrow we want to sustain our habitat, Mars, you know, we want to go to another planet and sustain life over there. Today's session is for you, for all those curious kids in you, right? So, let's start this unique journey. And sir, I would like to also add on one thing. I think after this session, they'll also appreciate our planet, right? They will get yes. to know how much, how much our planet is, you know, so amazing and how we are able to survive here. So I think that was also there. It's okay, Ayush. Oh, not a problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Yes. So all of you, you want to go to space, huh? You want to look for another planet where you can, you know, the life can survive, huh? Is it? How many of you think the, uh, like that? Come on. Lot of them are there. They just says that. Yes, nice. Space. Lot of them are there. It's okay, Ayush. It's completely fine. Let's. It's all back in the past. Amit is there. Oh, that is great. Nice, Deepashri. Nice. So let's start, people. Come on, come on. It's okay. Forget everything else. Let's focus on this journey. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Yes. So I think we will be having our astronaut friend who is also going to be there with us. Yes. So there's a story in this session. First of all, we came to know that there was some far-fetched planet called Phoenix. Again, hypothetical name. It's okay. But you know what? We got this information and we said, all right, so we might have to send people to check if this is possible, right? Fine. Okay. So, Phoenix Bay, the mission is, if, is to determine if planet is habitable or not. All right. So, is the question clear to you? Some planet very far from you, you have to go there and check if this planet is habitable. Fine. Yes. Correct, Tracy. Very good. Uh, diamond planet. <laughs> So diamond planet though we know it's not habitable, right? It's rich though. So yes, paisa zaruri hai ke jina. So that that that's a question I feel. Right? Come on, we won't digress. So the first thing we all need to go to other planet. What do you think? What do we need first? Space thing? shuttle. Yes. We need it. <laughs> Shall we board a space shuttle? Come on, Amir, honge balle balle. Let's go, right? Nice. Let's go to Phoenix then. Come on, three, two, one, and we have the launch. Oh, the launch. <laughs> That's, that's true. 
ठीक है आई होप यू यू एट समथिंग इन दिस फिफ्टीन मिनट पंद्रह मिनट क्या ऐसी बकर काटा नाइस सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू नो वॉट यू माइड एव नोटिस्ड वी हैड टू बर्न सो मच ऑफ फ्यूल राइट देर वॉज सो मच गैस कमिंग to overcome a force right a force is pulling the spacecraft back to the earth which force could it be right bur bur right there was some force you had to overcome that force and for that you were burning so much fuel right <sighs> that kind of a thing gravity nice bhavya very good gravitational force rajul nice it's gravity and more specifically earth's gravity because you were taking off from earth right earth's gravitational force nice so this was the force very good all right all right okay so at least we have left the planet now yes now we are traveling in space huh so every this is a uh, it's a step by step process by the way right you just left earth and you know by when i say you it means all of us you have to assume that you are that person who is just going outside to explore this new planet huh ah uh, avaz into robotic sound <laughs> <laughs> yes Very good. No centripetal force, Dipushri. I would say don't go there. Focus on gravitational force. Yes, gravitational force gives you centripetal. That's fine. It was gravitational force, है ना? बहुत अच्छे. चलो. Now you are traveling into space. Nice, है ना? Space में you're just enjoying all the view and every star and everything. Now suddenly, an alarm came. To 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 to. I mean, this is the alarm. You have to part. resort to. Yeah. Us giving background scores. You can choose any of the uh, alarm or alert sound. You know, uh, yes, menti. No, no, this is menti. Too much. It was. It's a PPT thing. You need animation. Menti does not support good animation. That's the problem with menti, right? Yes. Choose your good alert alarm sound, and that is coming. Alert. So, what is the uh, alert? Insufficient oxygen. Okay. Yes. So, what does this mean? See, it means that. you have oxygen so everybody agrees this no that in your spaceship we have it's it's you know uh, oxygen is there because you maintain oxygen but why space does not have oxygen but your spaceship has so that you can breathe na correct nice ha so insufficient oxygen uh, just alert came in front of you the problem is the speed needs to be increased in order to prevent the shuttle running out of oxygen okay so what do you think We need to increase the speed, of course, yes. But we also know that that is needed because, of course, at the end of the day, we need oxygen, right? And you guys can only tell us why oxygen is necessary. That's a very simple question, yes. But why do we require oxygen? It's a very simple one. Why does our body need oxygen? Yes, suffocation. Very good. But why does suffocation happen? We are already doing the calculation. How fast we need to go? <laughs> nice. So get your calculation first, and then we'll talk about why oxygen. Yes. See, you need return journey oxygen. No, you just if let's say Phoenix is not habitable, you should come back also, na? <laughs> It's not like a one-way journey. So that's why oxygen is good enough for return journey. But suddenly the message said you have to uh, cover cover the next twelve hundred kilometers in two minutes, so that you can maintain that level of oxygen. No, take care. That's why. Ha, nice for respiration. Oxygen is needed. Very good. Acha so what should be the new speed I mean how much speed you want for this spaceship come on 600 kilometers per minute you are saying ah huh? nice but you know what I'll just give you one hint so whenever you talk about this particular thing that what is the speed try to answer in SI units hmm. okay try to answer in SI units if nothing is said 600 meters kilometers per minute is something which is uh, very easy to see right now can we say something in meter per second come on so it is 1200 kilometers right yes yeah, so we'll have to convert it to meter per second so you all know the calculation and the conversion now i've also become very thorough <laughs> and you all this is important by the way you all remember that thing no that the the nasa lost one spaceship on mars because of this unit conversion mistake we have done one session on that also yeah. right Lockheed Martin was also there, and Jet Propulsion Laboratory was there, right? Remember? Nice, nice. Okay, but still, one minute, bacha. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
1200 kilometers convert into meter no into 1000 all right in two minutes two minutes two into one minute is 60 seconds two into 60 right so zero is gone this is what six to twelve so it is hundred kitna hai? 10,000 no 10,000 meter per second right calculation is important see if you did not calculate correct you will, you will lose oxygen Bas, phir ghar nahi aa hum log. so that's important no we should come back home Mami ko kya bol ke the? Ghar aayenge, na? that's why all right 10,000 meter per second got it fine so this is See, it's not just all fun. We have to, we have to do, uh, you know, concept uh, analysis and, and usage also in between. Otherwise, we'll not be able to go forward yes. in our exploration to the planet. And I think you all answered that correctly, no? Uh, for breakdown of glucose. Yes. For life, we need energy, right? So, and at the end of the day, energy is required for our body to function properly. So, it's important that, that our oxygen levels are maintained and we increase our speed. Yes. All right. So you figured it out. You increase the speed. And yes, you got a first look at Phoenix. Look beautiful, no? Right? Something like a, a half earth and half orange-ish kind, of kind of a planet. Nice. This is Phoenix, by the way. All right. So we have seen Phoenix now. And you were like, wow, it looks like Earth. <laughs> right? That's if you're looking for a planet, this is what your expression would be, no? Imagine yourself as this person, right? <laughs> they are saying mummy ko bolke gaye the khana bana ke rakha oh panvel dur nahi hai jane it's okay local pakadna yes correct right it looks like earth you got the first look and it feels like it's good enough right so can you tell us few of the things you are looking for this planet to be habitable what is it you are looking for can you tell us? Come on. And for those of you who may be wondering what is this word habitable, it is nothing but how if a planet, if it's a place where organisms can survive, right? Like say if we have to go there and live, can we survive there? So what are the basic things that as living organisms we will need to survive? Very good everybody. Very so smart. Nice. So water, you are saying. Oxygen, you are saying. Temperature, very good Shreyasi. Temperature is also important because our body needs optimum temperature. No, that's a little bit. Plants, land, food, water. Nice. So you have your checklist ready? Very good. This person also had a checklist. So let's see. So the astronaut was looking for? One is temperature. Then? Oxygen, of course. Yes. And we have gravity, right? Gravity is necessary. And last but not the least, we have water. So I will move the side so that you can see. Oh, the side is better. Yes. So gravity is also important. You don't want to go on a planet where just there is no gravity. What, what does this mean then? You just take a small jump and you are off the planet. You don't want that another thing, no? Right. So temperature, oxygen, gravity, water. There are multiple other things, but these are like necessities. Right? Basics. Basics. That we would need. Correct. You need dal. Then you put masala and namak and everything. So that's a luxurious different thing. Necessities first. Yes. So Ayush, we'll get to your point on food, right? Because a lot of them were wondering, why not food? So we'll tell you about it in just a bit. So food, to, uh, once you start living, then you need food. Na? First of all, just small checklist. Okay, chalo. Nice. Okay, so what does this space shuttle has? The shuttle is equipped with a temperature sensor, right? So the first pointer that we had was temperature. And we need to figure out what kind of thermometer is most likely to have a similar functioning as a temperature sensor. Okay. So you all, uh, during this whole pandemic period, we all came across one thing. That is very, very casually we saw it across, uh, you know, malls, uh, railway stations. Yes. Temperature sensors, sensors, right? Temperature scanners. So space shuttles are also equipped with temperature sensors. Now the question is, which one do you think is is the one which which they use is it clinical infrared or laboratory yes that's actually a very interesting question like now that i think about the sensors used to have those guns that yes. they used to keep right think about what is there a lot of them are giving us a lot of mixed answers nice 
वेरी गुड श्रेयसी आयुष करेक्ट सी when you say laboratory thermometer no we should understand one thing clinical and laboratory thermometer this is a very specific kind of thermometers where you need to just take the thermometer and touch it to the particular thing right laboratory mein theek hai range is fine but you need to just take thermometer and touch it right but infrared what does that uh, the the guard or the security people on the railway station or malls do they just take the thermometer in front of your forehead they just click the button and say oh you don't have fever you can go inside right that's what they do so you need a thermometer which you don't need to just go and check first right if temperature is fine then only you will step outside no so your spaceship needs to check thermometer without even touching it theek hai yes so that's why the answer is infrared and the reason this question become really important is because actually they have infrared thermometers only right the, the there was a company called diatech they teamed up with nasa for installing infrared thermometers in 1991 that's why okay yes infrared thermometer see uh, in future you will learn about pyrometers right these are devices which can measure how much radiation is coming in so that's why today i won't go very deep into it but ha huh, infrared thermometers they can just see how much radiation comes off from all the bodies and and detect how much temperature that body has theek hai yes very good very good so the answer is infrared thermometers you won't just take clinical or laboratory and start running outside and touching things and you know? don't do that yes and sir if i may add why do you think temperature is important for organisms to survive right like why are we doing that temperature check why can't we just go ahead with it's okay whatever the temperature is it's yeah. fine why are we having that temperature check in the first place can any of you let us know in the chat yes very good ayush very good correct It's a good question, by the way, right? But temperature, why does it matter for you? How much temperature you want? Because the chat is very quiet. Yeah, can we refresh the chat? I think it's stuck. Yeah. All right then, the chat is yes. All right, very good, very good. Long range. I think there's a slight bit of lag in our end. because we have certain body temperatures around 36 or 37 degree celsius correct you see oh amit says we will freeze or burn if not normal temperature yes so technically for living organisms we know that there are various chemical processes that takes place within our body right and some of these chemical processes happen at a certain range of temperature too much of it or too less it may affect the normal functioning so for it to be habitable the temperature needs to be right so that is very important to understand yes yes for not to fry us that's true <laughs> so temperature is checked hai na okay it's fine so we can at least come outside first nice but still you know what when you come outside you'll maintain your whole space suit thing you won't just remove your helmet no because it's still temperature is fine but still there are other things right so okay now the moment you just step outside what is the first thing you will encounter i'm not serious today am i serious no no <laughs> <laughs> so the person just figured out i'm able to walk with similar efforts as on earth what does this tell you yes very good we see land and air conditions correct nice gravity as earth difference in gravitational force gravity correct dipanshu dipashi very good ayush nice yes correct correct yes yes nice so it's gravity you understood okay i'm not i'm not just if i jump i can walk properly it's so fine gravity is okay right all right all right okay gravity is check now that we are talking about gravity because it's not just you want to stand you also want to walk which force helps us to walk on any surface i think you doing this you know you will also realize that how scientists or anyone they they should be good in science because you have to apply everything wherever you go hai right? <laughs> na 
नाइस वेरी गुड अंकुर अद्रिजा हरसिमरन एस एम आर एम यजनेश फ्रिक्शन ट्रू है ना ग्रेविटी विल मेक श्योर यू डोंट जस्ट फ्लाई ऑफ बट फ्रिक्शन विल मेक श्योर दैट यू कैन वॉक प्रॉपरली अदरवाइज अदरवाइज द पर्सन विल जस्ट कीप स्टैंडिंग एंड मोमेंट यू जस्ट पुट योर लेग फॉरवर्ड एंड यू एंड यू विल जस्ट फॉल अगैन राइट सो दैट्स वाई करेक्ट आंसर इज फ्रिक्शन बहुत बढ़िया ओके नाउ दिस इज दिस वॉज डेरिंग Yeah, this uh, our astronaut has become very adventurous suddenly. All this while he was careful, but now he has just decided that you know I am missing some adventure. So he has removed his helmet and he wants to check if he is able to breathe without his suit, right? So he is trying to assess the air conditions. And sir, let's see what kind of air conditions do we have. So which set of gases would be ideal for survival of living organisms? Can you tell A? Oh, A or B? Yes. <laughs> Which one? N two CO two and O two or SO two CO two and O two. So I would say let's call A is which one? N two wala. Yeah, A is N two. And B is SO two. Okay. So this session is more or less like I don't know if you have seen those games, right? At each levels, you yeah. have to answer things and then the story will move forward, right? Very good, very good. Yes, we need N two CO two and O two over SO two and whatever combination that was there. And of course, if you see, this is very similar to the kind of support or the kind of gases that we find in our atmosphere. Yes. And I would say that the percentage of gases is very important. Like if we talk about our atmosphere, we have around seventy eight percent of nitrogen. We have around twenty one percent of oxygen and less than zero point zero four percent of carbon dioxide. Now, of course, we know why we require them. As you can see, one is unreactive; it supports life to maintain temperature. But have you ever, guys, wondered like, is it okay? Why are we just having twenty-one percent oxygen? Why can't we have like fifty, sixty percent of oxygen? I mean, yeah, if oxygen is so good, why are we not having hundred percent oxygen? Exactly. Why are we having only twenty-one percent? Right? Can any of you tell me why only twenty-one percent is really good, but having more amount of oxygen is that good or bad? Yes, yes, very good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Come on, come on, think, huh? SO two is sulfur dioxide. Yes, not sodium dioxide. Sodium is Na, right? By the way. Yes. Bad. Okay, Ruchi says bad. Aryan says bad. Now, can you all tell me why do you think having more oxygen is bad? If oxygen is really that good. Okay. All right, because it will harm our lungs. Okay. it will increase the temperature all right nitrogen cancels burning ha very good very good very good all of you for those of you who are telling oxygen supports burning right so we know that for combustion yes we need oxygen too much of oxygen it's not really good because it will support combustion or more burning will happen and again not very habitable right which is why having 78% of nitrogen is extremely necessary because we have the right amount Now, sir, I have one more question to yes. ask you and them. Why are we having only zero point zero four percent carbon dioxide? Mm. You know, carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis, right? Yes. Why is that zero point zero four number very important? And a hint is also there on screen, by the way. Yeah. Yes, very good, Dipanshu. That's also a very important pointer. Correct. Nice. Yes, global warming, right? True. Nice, you guys are good, huh? You know all the stuff. And what they don't realize is they're applying so many different concepts at one go. Yes. This is like watching a good science fiction movie and trying to apply all the concepts. <laughs> movie with with uh, all the learning also. Nice, very good. Warming of the planet. Right. So the thing is, we need the right amount. So see, zero point zero four percent. Maybe point zero one zero two up and down is okay, but you see carbon dioxide. What it does, right? It traps the right amount of heat energy or, or the heat sunlight that is there within the atmosphere. And we know, right? That's how the temperature in Earth is maintained, right? So that yes. we are able to be like it's habitable. But at the same time, too much of it is bad. And if we didn't have enough carbon dioxide, also it would the heat energy would not be trapped, and then heat will just come and go. Yes. But you don't want that, right? 
So yes, CO2 is important. It's, a, it's called a global warming gas, right? Yeah. Greenhouse gas, yeah. Sorry, greenhouse gas. Uh, and it's, it's, it causes <laughs> global warming if it is more. Yes, yeah. sorry, my bad. Correct. And sulfur dioxide is not good. It damages lungs. Oxygen although supports life. CO2 to maintain plant temperature. But sulfur dioxide gave this one away, right? So that's why. The yes. first, the A box was good. Alright. We got the answer. We we want nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. Yes, ati bhi kharaab, kami bhi kharaab. Both achhe. Yes, should be an equal amount. Very good. Oh, a slight nosebleed occurred as soon as he removed the space suit. What could be the reason? I mean, gravity was fine. All right, air was also okay. But then what is the problem? Why do you think he suddenly got a little bit of nose bleeding? They're there. Nice. We, before we could complete the question, they have reached the answer. Achha, pressure is high or low? Okay, I can see some saying low, some saying high, and some saying no oxygen because of heat. Ayush is so smart. He's like, change! <laughs> <laughs> so the, old, the one way, na? Ha. So we have learned this. When do we have nosebleeds? Sir, when we go to heights, right? So whenever you go to high places, no? Sometimes nose bleeding occurs. And the answer is yes, low pressure, right? Because our body at sea level is just balancing all that atmospheric pressure. By the way, it's like three or four elephants sitting on top of you. So this much pressure is there and our body is actually sustaining it. Why? Because of this outside pressure. But when you just go high, the atmospheric pressure becomes low and your this pressure becomes high and which means the blood comes out, hmm. right? But why only nose? So I think you should be telling the answer. I think because nose have no very delicate these, uh, what do we say, naksiri we call it in English? Yes, those fine capillaries yes. that are there. I knew the Hindi name, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alright. So. Means pressure is slightly low, but it was not very low because it stopped also after some time, right? It's okay, Himani, not a problem. We were just exploring a new planet today. Yeah. It's nice. All right, all right. <laughs> Chalo. Now, what is it? It's been a long time, and now the question comes which you were worried most. <laughs> What is in food? Menu, what is the menu, right? And he says, now I'm starving. All right, now, there's a question for you. Now, which set of food is the best for consumption? And as you can see, we have two sets of food here with us. One, of course, as you can see, oh yeah, A here is all the canned food that is there, right? And B here that you can see is a lot of junk food. Yajnesh, I do understand. You, this looks delicious, but <laughs> yeah, there's always a compromise between taste and health. Yeah, it's a tough compromise. Nice, everybody says A, huh? And you guys can tell us why also. Why A? Apart from the fact that it is not junk food. <laughs> a, but I like B. <laughs> yes, canned. Yes, all right. Healthy, okay. No radiation. B is more tasty. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Even if, let's say, instead of the, all the junk food, we gave you nice green vegetables, palak, and you know, loki, and spinach, <laughs> and bottle goat. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I should tell you the English name, right? The, the bitter goat, bottle goat, and you know, spinach, and everything we gave you. Still, what would you have chosen? Would you have chosen the palak loki or, or things or you would have chosen the canned food? Come on. If there was no junk food, what would you recommend for this astronaut to carry with him? Fresh food versus canned or packaged food here. Canned, yes. Very good, Anand. Very good. Why nice. canned though? That's what we're trying to ask. Why are we still choosing canned food over fresh fruits, fruits and vegetables that are there? Yes, they are packaged. Actually, this is a very simple one. Also. Yeah. Nutrition, okay. Other one also, fresh fruits and vegetables have nutrition. They have better nutrition, I would say. You have seen Popeye, yeah? Spinach. 
and you won't have seen papa i think i have oh i thought this is an our age group <laughs> <laughs> yes all right so nice anand they get raw they get spoiled right and they're very perishable so when we say perishable it's easy when we talk about canned food it's easy to store right and easy to transport and our astronaut is going on a next level journey yeah. yes so if he's going to you know take all this and go there then there are chances that it will get damaged right which is why over that we of course prefer to have canned food which is properly packaged and yes here as you can see he has both plant and animal based ones when compared to the unhealthy food that we have right? like harsimran said whether it's in phoenix or whether it's in earth we will not recommend unhealthy Junk food that's true hai na long duration was yes. the important thing it's not like mumbai pune thing <laughs> nice so we all answered correctly it's canned food because of preserved food right stays long and yeah nutrients are properly added and everything good ha ah, age age <laughs> yeah some day we'll talk about this <laughs> All right. Now another problem. He is thinking how to heat up the food, and now you are thinking, sir, microwave. <laughs> Maybe he forgot to bring microwave, right? Now he is saying how to heat up the food. Okay. He has options. Can he use solar cooker? All right. Why? Because can you can see it? Oh, uh, there is a sun over here. This is the sun, by the way. It's not an icon, which I might have thought. So this is the sun. Chanda. <laughs> nice <laughs> usko bolo thanda ka <laughs> okay good <laughs> all right still <laughs> let's say he said i have learned some physics <laughs> i will apply some physics so he wants to make use a solar cooker which mirror he can use convex concave or plane which type of reflecting surface is used in a solar cooker convex concave or plane <laughs> but yeah that's a good comment <laughs> convex ha huh? yeah. is it solar cooker come on think think are what happened here is it out of syllabus thanda <laughs> nahi nahi no 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 see thing about convex is convex is this side reflecting hai na the the curved outside reflecting concave is this curved inside reflecting what do you want all the sun rays should come they should fall on this mirror and then they should be concentrated at one point you want this kind of a surface right you will also notice all the dish right uh, potato sky whatever dish you are using you might see that it's this kind of an umbrella shape inverted umbrella shape is there why all the rays should come fall and just focus at one point similar thing here eh? concave surface where rays will fall con uh, converge on a point and that's how you will heat things right concave is the answer convex is the diverging thing if you just make all the rays to fall on this they will spread out no how will you heat if it's spreading out right so you want to convex you know you want to just concentrate things ha ah. <laughs> ha ah. yes i would also have said thanda khalo but yeah theek hai he wants luxury <laughs> all right so concave is the correct answer fine got it this is an important thing by the way because i can see a lot of you said uh, wrong answer convex is not the right answer okay ha ah, yes correct imani that's true surveillance mirrors convex very good chalo now next thing temperature is done food is done everything is done now comes the i would say the first thing which they said water yes so let's talk about water oh he brought some strip huh? what is this yeah So now what has happened is he's wandering around in Phoenix and he has you know come across some soil right and when he's touching the soil he's finding it to be a little moist and it we know right when we touch dry soil versus moist soil but how will he know that it is water right so how is he going to do it so he has some strip with him right yes very good he can measure the ph level of water right and we know that ph is nothing but a unit in which we measure like the acidity basicity of it but let's not go deeper into this so this is going to be something new and interesting for all of you right so ph is of course one way of doing it but another way of testing for water is a very interesting way by using a chemical substance known as cobalt chloride so here as you can see he has a strip of cobalt chloride that is blue in color right it is sky blue but what happens is that when you press it so let's 
have a look. Yes. So when you press it on the moist soil and you keep it, so when it comes in close contact with water, we will observe a change in color and it becomes purplish to pinkish blue. And for those of you who are wondering a little bit more, so this is just going to be an extension of this concept, but we all know, right, that there is a process known as transpiration that takes place, wherein there is loss of excess water from the aerial parts of the plant, right? And we see that this cobalt chloride is something that we use, cobalt chloride paper, right? So this is important. They use this as a test to detect transpiration as well. So this is one way to check for water, of course, without using the litmus paper. Litmus paper is the easiest way to do it. But this is just some extra information for all of you regarding this. Yes? But this is more specific to water, right? Yeah. So this is more like an indicator for water, you can think. Yeah. Blue to purple, cobalt chloride strip, okay? Remember about this. You might require on, that, on some planet, right? Yeah. So yeah. here, as you can see, we've done our check for water. Water is available. And especially if it's in the soil, we have ground water, right? Nice. So okay, now... At least immediate problems are all sorted. Now you want to live on this planet. You have to grow your own food, plants, whatever, right? So can we grow plants on Phoenix? All right, let's talk about, first of all, what we require for plants. All right, I think in one, the A box, we have H2O, water, CO2, carbon dioxide, and sun. Means sunlight, by the way, not sun, right? And in the second one, we have oxygen, CO2, and sunlight. So. Which of these two you think is, is required for plants? Yes, focus on this, right? We are talking about what would be required for photosynthesis, A or B. I am very surprised. I am getting mixed answers. Okay, A is the H2O1, B is the O2-1. O2-1. Very good, everyone. Very good. Nice. Still, there is a little debate, I think, in this. Yeah. Huh? All right, all right. So, answer is A. But why? Why not oxygen? I mean, oxygen, everyone requires oxygen. Yes. Because when we talk about photosynthesis, we know that carbon dioxide and water are the raw materials, right? And of course, if we were to take a seed as well. So now he's got all that canned food, right? So even if he takes a seed, sows it in soil, it requires water, right? And of course, we have established that in the atmosphere, there is air. But wherein you have oxygen as well. But specifically for photosynthesis, what we require is carbon dioxide and water. Sunlight is an essential because it takes place in the presence of sunlight and our plants will already have the chlorophyll. Which means that water is essential. Yes? Yes. Ha. Now I know everybody will get confused with oxygen. But now once the plant is growing and it's doing photosynthesis, it will anyway give out oxygen as a byproduct, right? Yes. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Not a problem, right? So, CO2, water, and this question is more like what you require, the, pro, the raw materials for photosynthesis. Yes. Correct. So, that was the question. So, in a way, you have answered a question, what are the raw materials for photosynthesis? <laughs> True. Yeah, nah? Asa these are all out of syllabus questions. <laughs> these are yeah. actually... Photosynthesis is very simple. Yeah, simple. Right? Nice. Very good, everybody. Very good. So, he got a plant over there. Alright, so we have checked temperature, oxygen, gravity, water. Well done. Phoenix is habitable then. Alright. So tomorrow I feel whenever you have a space shuttle, think of go to Phoenix. And just find your own Phoenix. But you know what? Better than Phoenix, I would say, let's take care of Earth, no? Yes. Because we have all of this with us. We have soil, we have the water. It's Earth is like almost a perfect place, you would say, where we can all survive, right? And right now, there's a lot of exploitation of resources that is happening. Yes, Re yes whether it is soil, whether it is water, whether it's the air, there's a lot of pollution that is there. So I think it's very important that we do our step to save sure. our wonderful planet. See, the whole point of the doing this whole exercise was, the person got lucky. He found his phoenix. You might not be lucky because till now we don't have anything very concrete, a planet where, which is Earth-like, you can just survive. So let's take care of this planet, no? So which means, take care of the energy conservation, don't just, you know, uh, lay waste here and there, we know not to use plastics, right? So all these things we can do and we should take care of our planet because this is the only place where we know we can survive, otherwise we don't know where else to go, right? Yes. Correct? Uh, let's go to Phoenix. <laughs> He found his phoenix. We don't know what is our phoenix. Maybe. Maybe tomorrow. But today, to nahi pata bhai. Okay? 
right? Haan. Please take care of our planet and save our planet. That becomes really, really important, right? And on that was we have done a lot of campaigns, now. Yes, we've had an we've had the Earth Day campaigns. We've done so much. Like on a constant basis, we always come to you telling you about how important it is to do our part, right? You may think that how does it matter if I don't throw waste, right? Change, sta change doesn't start elsewhere. Change starts on that revolution that we call. It starts from us. Maybe yes. someone else is not doing it, but you do your bit because tomorrow that small thing also amounts to a very, very large portion. And imagine if each and every one of you feel this way, like, okay, I will do my bit. I'm not going to think about someone else. That means all of you here plus us, right? Yes, charity starts at home. Yes, that's how we start here. And that way, when everybody starts thinking that way, that already amounts to something big altogether. Yes? You know, yes. very... But these are all good <laughs> things. See, uh, we all might know this. Sometimes we just forget. We chose that it's okay. I am. But please, take care of our planet because this is the only place we know how to survive. Otherwise, we don't know where else to go. That's why I'm just repeating this stuff. Huh? We have got you covered and you have to get the planet covered, which means your job becomes very important, right? It's you who should be taking care of this. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, this was the result we told all of you. Class 10 students know and just you also know this. We got amazing results. Trisha was the topper with 99.8% and we have above 90% 2000 plus students. And that's why this hashtag becomes really important. Mehnat ka result because when you do and you when you work hard for something and you get something, it becomes really important. That's why Mehnat ka result is the good hashtag. So make sure you also do Mehnat so that you can get a good result and you can also use the hashtag Mehnat ka result. Telegram, very important. And if you want to show us your love, like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And of course, if you want, if you like this session and you want more such sessions, let us know in the comment section below because you know we're always checking your comments, right? Yes. And of course, now you also know so we check your chats as well. So you can always, always let us know in the comments, right? I nice. hope you had a lot of fun in today's class. And Himani, that's true. Huh? If you want to say, if you want to go to Phoenix, you have to go to NASA and then you have to give Ante. <laughs> So yes, and then we have given you all the details. Yes, it's free. Don't worry. And guys, show your love by liking, just putting the thumbs up button, sharing this to your friends, bring your friends and for the next sessions, subscribe to the channel. This is what we are asking you, right? Okay. Thank you, Pratiksha. Means a lot. Chalo, yes. take care, people. Save the planet. Take care of yourself and keep learning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.